parking permit, allowing the city manager to set the rates for parking fees and imposing downtown parking fees by the calendar year. First reading. And this is continued from 12 17 18. Chris, ready, please? Good evening, Council. Uh, good evening and Happy New Year. Um, this item was continued from the uh, last meeting on December 17th. Uh, it has uh, three items, uh, three main items all pertaining to the downtown parking district and the city's parking fund. The first is uh, an official establishment of a downtown residential parking permit. The other two um, are moving the fee year to be uh, aligned with the calendar year as opposed to the fiscal year, meaning that Permits are issued on a year from January to December. That's to align with current practice. And the third is uh, to allow this um, allow the permit fees to be set uh, with the city manager's fee schedule, which comes out you know periodically about once a year. Now, I think the main item that was uh, that was talked about in December was the, the the permit itself, the downtown residential parking permit. So uh, we brought that item back with some very minor changes to it. Uh, the first is we cleaned up some language in the ordinance. You may notice it's a bit cleaner this time. Last time we tried to organize some things to make it read better, but that made the ordinance itself a lot more, I think, uh, just busy and hard to understand. So we have eliminated those as there were no substantial changes in that. So all it does um, in terms of that is establish this downtown parking permit. Now, uh, this permit uh, was recommended from the uh, downtown parking advisory committee uh, to be and the lots of, of uh, Aspen and Juniper, which on the maps here are at the corners of 7th and Walnut and uh, 7th and Pine Street. So the, those are the two lots that the downtown parking district uh, com um, committee has uh, recommended those be uh, put into. Now, that is also not in the ordinance. So that's something that would go uh, to the purview of the city manager, but that was a recommendation from the committee. So I'm bringing this as a recommendation. The other component of this was um, they would be uh, set at a price of $25 a month or $3 a year. Now to clarify, that is not part of the ordinance. That is not part of what you're voting on tonight. That would also be moved to the city manager's fee schedule and be, would be set through that process. So the, the, the issue tonight does not, does not pertain to, to that price. Well, we, we do plan to issue this permit on a month to month basis. So if you purchase a downtown parking permit, you would not be required to carry it for the rest of the year. You could discontinue at any point and buy it on a monthly basis. It would also be the responsibility of the person who owns the vehicle to purchase these permits. So this does not put a burden on property owners or apartment owners, it is on the tenant themselves. If you're an apartment owner and you want to provide them, you can do that, but you're not obligated to, uh, by default, it would, would fall to the tenant. Um, with, with that, uh, are there any questions from council about this issue, uh, what it pertains to or for what uh, this motion is? Just um, for the audience, he's talking about <coughs> the city manager's fee schedule under city code section 1.075. There's a process that we use for our fees. Uh, we recommend those fees. Council can look at those fees. If you decide any of those fees uh, warrant further discussion, then we bring those to council. Otherwise, if that's the process it goes through. There's a recommendation to council. Council reviews those. They have several weeks to look at that. And then the <coughs> staff, they want to bring those back. So it's not, it's not me just setting fees. I want to just be clear. Whenever they say that I get to set the fees, I, I, I don't. I recommend them to you, and as long as you agree, then they'll, they'll go into effect. And also, also that, that same price uh, coming from the downtown parking committee, I'm bringing that to you as just to convey the information that that was the recommendation. Again, that's not in front of you. It's just that that was recommended. So we're letting you know that's what was recommended, and that will be voted on. Or uh, brought to council at a different different date with the city manager's fee schedule. Any more questions for Mr. Rose? Okay, because this was a public hearing and it was left open, we're going to take any anybody wishing to speak on this can still speak on this. So, um, nobody wanting to speak on this issue? Seeing and hearing nobody else, um, we will close that portion of it. I'll take a motion for discussion. Um, Councilman Dawson. Yeah, I, I do think having a residential parking permit program in place 
makes sense. Um, but it, it seems like we've been talking about it for a few years, and I'm, I'm fine putting one in. Um, you know, based on the public comments we had last council, I, I know the, the actual value or the charge for the permit's not a part of this, but I think it, it sounds like the market rate is $10 down there right now, downtown, um, with the people that do have vacant spots that are renting to those spots out to apartment tenants. Um, so I, I do think that should be factored in as what the current market is. It sounds like that wasn't necessarily analyzed. Um, it was more analyzed from what do we need to break even? And I don't think our downtown is quite at that. I don't think that's the market price of, is the break even price yet. Hopefully we can get there. Um, so to summarize, I think we should should pass this, but I think that fee is too high. What's the proposed one? I think it should be. Councilman Doc Adner is. Do you mind if I ask one more question? Or sure. Any question? Mm -hmm. uh, so I was in the crowd the last time, and to my understanding, the cost is between twenty and thirty thousand uh, dollars for the parking expenses to the city. Is that correct? And this covers about seventy five hundred. For, for the entire uh, fund, you mean? Yeah. Well, the entire fund is actually quite a bit larger than that. It's about one hundred fifty thousand dollars if you include personnel and enforcement and what would it take to upkeep parking lots. Um, we currently have been subsidized by the by the general fund. By, um, by a number closer to that number, so that's more of the shortfall, okay. but the fund itself is larger. Uh, I, I think there was a comment made last time that uh, there will be reconsideration in the future for uh, potential uh, business parking and, and, and the such. Is that correct? Is that still yes, yes. Um, so the, the committee has been tasked with looking at all these things. So we went with residential first um, and with the calendar year coming new, and with um, specifically with Oregon Health Science University moving more tenants downtown, this was something that we wanted to bring earlier. But we we do uh, foresee that there will be uh, we'll be looking into all, all the other rate structures over the course of the next year or so. So you're saying that we need to do this now because of some potential uh, residential occurrences here, and that's why we're doing. I, I was I guess I was going to ask why don't we bite the apple once and just do it all at once and. and do the business and, and this residential and uh, look at uh, extended parking hours in certain areas. Why don't we just do the once instead of doing the stair step? I guess I'm not going to for that. Well, I think that we're are in the grand scheme of things, we're looking at doing that, and that's why we, we're, we're separating the dollar amount and, and putting it in the fee schedule so that at a later date we can do it all at once. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I do like the changes of making it a monthly. And a, um, an option for the resident, they may choose to walk three blocks to a non regulated parking area, or they may choose to pay. So it's nice that they have that option. And we're also trying to make this an impact fee. So if you're not driving a vehicle, there's no reason you need to be paying the district or things for it. Move to introduce the ordinance for first reading by title only. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Please read. State House located at 2065 Oregon Avenue. Planning Manager Joe Wall presenting. parking program, but that looks not to be the case, so here we go. <laughs> so first two items up on the agenda for myself, I, I think, would like to think should be relatively straightforward. Um, I want to find the agenda report for this one specifically, but what we're looking at is a restaurant. Okay, so what we're looking at here, longtime home to what was Waffle Hut, roughly at the intersection of Oregon Avenue and Bean Street. Um, Waffle Hut did move downtown, where they still have a on-site liquor license. Uh, 
Um, anytime you have a change of owner, what we do is they fill out a liquor license application and city council, in essence, makes a recommendation to OLCC, so the Oregon Liquor Control Commission. In this case, they're looking for a full on-premises sales license. So that would mean beer, wine, malt beverages, and hard liquor. Um, as part of this process, we do send out notice to neighbors within a certain distance, and we also ask the police department to uh, kind of identify any concerns. I will note at current, and maybe this is something that comes back in front of council at a later time in terms of a different policy, but at current, um, we really don't have, I'd say, much criteria as far as awarding liquor licenses. I do realize it's a recommendation to OLCC, and from what I've gathered, perhaps unless someone has a criminal record or something else, those are largely probably issued. So with this, I am not sure if we have anyone in the audience tonight representing David's Breakfast and Steakhouse. It's my understanding this location opened up in about November, and that they put this application in. So really here to answer any questions, and then what would be motion to recommend, that, recommend if that's the case. The applicant is in the audience. Would you like to speak? Yes. Okay. Name and address, please. My name is Michelle Cabrera, and I live on 2435 Everlight Avenue. Our business is. One second. Can you turn the microphone on? Little button next. My name is Michelle Cabrera. I am one of the owners of David's Breakfast and Steakhouse. I live on 2435 Everline Avenue. I have been a citizen of Columbus Falls for the, my whole life. I do recognize that some people may be concerned that we will not be respecting the laws because we know that there has been an issue with lots of over drinking at this location. We have heard many things from our public telling us that they are very happy that we have taken over the building because they have had issues in the past with the neighborhood, with the neighborhood, excuse me. Um, I would like to um, take care of those concerns. I'd like to reassure everyone that every single owner of the business has taken the OLCC course, has gotten their permit, has been approved, and we are dedicated to following the laws we are a family-owned business, so of course we will only be selling certain alcohols, not exactly hard alcohol. We want this because many of our public, many of our customers have asked us to acquire a license for wines, for beers. We do not have um, an idea for hard liquor. We simply want to have our customers enjoy perhaps a wine or a beer with their steaks given that most steakhouses do serve alcohol. If there are any concerns, I would be more than happy to um, set them to rest. Are there any questions from the council? <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, do we have a public hearing? We do. So if anybody else wishing to speak on this um, is welcome to come up. This is a public hearing that's open. And seeing and hearing nobody, we will close that. I make a motion to approve option one, which is to move to recommend to OCC the approval of a full-on liquor license sale for David's Breakfast and Steakhouse. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Number six three, a limited off-premise sales liquor license request for Dollar General located at 3810 Green Springs Drive. And we have Joe Wall, planning manager, report. Perfect. So another recommendation in front of you for a liquor license, this one being off-premises, meaning you would not consume the beverages on site, ideally, and you take them home. Um, this is for Dollar General. Um, these photos were taken, I, I don't know, probably about a month ago or so now. I understand this location is now open. Um, it's largely at the gateway to the Stewart Lennox neighborhood and 3810 Green Springs Drive. So this is a new Dollar General retail location. Uh, previously went through a design review with city staff as far as approving the development itself and now the 
So when I look at Google aerial images, I realize this was taken prior to uh, this location breaking ground. But with this, you know, I'd like to think with a national retailer that they would have certain mechanisms of control as far as, let's say, identifying patrons or, you know, it's not a bar, it's very people who are serving. So with this limited beer, wine, I'm not quite sure exactly what they have in there, but kind of beer, wine, largely off-premises sales for this location, Dollar General, that is recently opened. <coughs> and again, it's a recommendation from City Council to OLCC. Any questions for Brandon? Cool. And this is a, um, we will open the public hearing portion if you'd like to come up and speak. Julia King. Hi, I'm Julia King. I'm a district manager for Dollar General, and I cover the Southern Oregon market. Um, I wanted to let you know tonight that we carry a very limited amount of alcohol in our building. We do um, graciously honor all of OLCC um, recommendations. Our training is about five hours on the computer, and um, our alcohol training is second only to our mission and vision training. We take that seriously. Um, I apologize, I have a very bad cold. Um, Dollar General has um, a rule that doesn't go over well with the public all the time, and that rule is simply that we ID everybody every time. So if you're 21 or 121, if you're the mayor's neighbor, you're still gonna have to show your ID every time. Um, I'm a mother, and I would never want anybody to sell my children who are underage alcohol. But more importantly, at our stores, um, we're also trained to see people who are maybe in an altered state. Um, and we often reject selling alcohol to people. <laughs>